from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Real estate investment trust company Attack has reported an improvement in the office and retail sectors following a downswing during the COVID-19 pandemic. Darren Parker tells us more. The ailing office space subsector of the property market is starting to see a recovery after COVID-19 caused thousands of companies to adopt work from home models to protect their employees. However, the office space market is starting to experience something of a recovery, according to Attack. It's been definitely an interesting sector to be in as, as a developer and also as a real estate owner. You know, at COVID we all sat at home and we all thought, you know what, this is the end of the office. You know, people think, you know, we can all live and work from the same place. But what also has happened is companies have realized, more from a company organizational point of view, that my culture and that cooler talk, water cooler talk is not happening because people are just sitting on team schools and, and they're closing out the work. And also knowledge transfer started, you know, you know um, disappearing. Um, especially from senior members to the more junior members. So what we've seen coming out of COVID is the phenomenon of companies are protecting their culture and their organizational knowledge sharing by having the office. What has happened is people are saying, you know what, I can work three days from, off from an office and two days from home. So the hybrid working space is much, very much introduced through COVID saying, I can work from home, but I need to be at the office. So we are seeing that a lot of consolidations are happening. Corporates are saying, I need my corporate head office, I need the collaboration, my culture, but I can do it in a smaller space. So the state of the office market is currently there's quite a bit of vacancies and a lot of second hand space that corporates are leaving and moving into smaller space. The other phenomenon trend that we are seeing is as corporates are saying, you know what, I want more efficient space, greener space, um, less uh, a carbon footprint neutral space. And I also want a place in South Africa where I feel safe and my employees have got a value add to draw them back to the office. Um, so the future of the office is very much consolidation, um, safety, quality, and also the green future we definitely see as a, as a big demand um, for the office space. The retail subsector also suffered significant setbacks during the height of the pandemic, although it has shown remarkable resilience. While Attack reported that the overall foot count for 2022 was still below 2019 levels, it was showing signs of improvement. Oh, again, COVID, we had no trade because retailers had to close shop, um, restaurants couldn't sell alcohol, so it had a massive impact. And then you saw all of our national retailers introducing deliveries, you know, from out our stores, Willie's Dash, Chica 6060, and pick and buy bottles, and, and we thought, you know, what's going to happen to this market? But what we've seen with typical super regional shopping centers, people come back to the mall for more than just buying goods. They come back to visit their friends, to do something over a weekend, to come to the movies. We've seen a phenomenal bounce back in movies, people attending movies. So the, the mall is still that community space, still the place where I want an experience of a shopping center. And we've definitely seen it come through in the numbers. We've had phenomenal growth in turnover, footfall still 10%, lower than pre-COVID days, so we are definitely seeing people visiting less, but shopping more at a stage when, they, when they're in the mall. Um, we're seeing international brands starting to come back into South Africa, um, you know, wanting to grow in their business. But the other component that we're still a bit concerned about is the credit sales. We, we're doing a lot of work to say, is the big sales that we're seeing coming through the national retailers credit-driven or cash-driven sales? Will the consumer be able to afford paying back the credit that they've taken um, in the end of the month with the rising inflation and interest rates? So there is a bit of a balance. So we, we, we definitely see a, a vibrant, buoyant post-COVID retail trade, but the substance of it that we, we're just keeping a close eye on, on the credit sales. Meanwhile, the tax residential developments across Waterfall City also benefited from robust demand during 2022 which the company attributed to the safety and lock-up-and-go convenience afforded to residents. In particular, the company reported that its Ellipse multi-high-rise apartment building developments in Waterfall City have enjoyed significant success over the past year. Ellipse was for us as a, as a developer our first residential high-rise um, development. We've completed the first two buildings and we're currently almost finishing the, the third building and we've just launched the sales of the fourth building. So the Ellipse development is a luxury development, high-rise development, and the sales have gone phenomenally well. 
uh, much better than what we've anticipated. Um, and we've definitely seen the demand. South Africans wanting to rent and buy space in a inner city development. Again, that's safe, secured, good quality, lock up and go, very, very popular. Um, and we never thought that that would have such a big demand. So for, for us in Waterfall, we've seen that there is a big demand. Um, we've certainly seen more inquiries um, for the future. And this has almost given us an indication of you know, we would like to do more of these type of developments for the future. However, we're keeping a close eye on rising interest rate, affordability, how big is the, the pool of buyers and investors into this type of market. But building a city, you need people living in the city. So you can't have people work here and shop here in the evenings at stake. You need to bring an all-rounded facility where people can actually live, work and play. Um, and, and that's why the introduction of residential and waterfall cities is vital in, in building a long-lasting sustainable community. So this is one of many that we'll, we will introduce in. Our JV partners are very important. Um, they need to be of high experience of, of residential development and we'll continue to roll it out. Um, we've also stopped the development in Waterfall because the feasibility didn't work out, the sales wasn't there. So it's particularly important for us, capital allocation, the, the, the type of development, how it will work before we actually will start actually putting you know, money into the, to the land. So, Lots still to come. It lives have been greatly successful, um, and then we will continue to build the waterfall community with residential developments for the future. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.